Hello and welcome to Med Simplified. In this video, we will discuss why do we get acne and how to treat acne. In the end, we will also discuss some at-home remedies that you can do to prevent and treat acne at home. So let's begin. I am Dr. Omar and I am the creator of this channel Med Simplified. I am doing my MD in Dermatology only and I thought why not make a video on the topic of acne itself as more than 40-50% to 50 of youngsters all across the globe suffer from acne. I myself have suffered from grade 4 acne in my teenagers and to this date carry the scars of those acne which will probably never go away. Well, that being said, let's begin with today's video in which we will discuss about acne. We will begin with some interesting facts about acne and then we will talk about how acne develop. We will discuss the role of pilosebaceous unit and the role of testosterone and diet in acne. So let's begin with some important facts about acne. Acne is the most common skin condition in United States. According to the Academy of Dermatology, mild to moderate acne affects 40 to 50 million Americans per year. And while acne usually begins in the puberty and affects almost 90% of teenagers, acne is not restricted to any age group. In fact, acne affects 20% of adults between the ages of 25 and 44. The most common bacteria that is involved in acne is the Propionibacterium acne, which is the gram-positive bacteria present on human skin as a part of normal flora, as well in the oral cavity, in the large intestine, conjunctiva and external ear canal, meaning that this bacteria is a normal bacteria on our skin. And only in conditions where acne formation is favored, this bacteria colonizes and causes inflammation. So to understand acne in the first place, you will have to understand about this structure in your skin and this is known as the pilosebaceous unit. Look at all the small hair shafts on your face. These hair shafts correspond to this structure in the illustration of a pilosebaceous unit. Here you can see a cut section of the skin showing the pilosebaceous unit. Now look at the word itself. Pilosebaceous. It is made up of two words. Pilo meaning hair and sebaceous because this structure also contains a sebaceous gland which is connected to the hair follicle. The sebaceous gland is a small oil producing gland of our skin which does the job of lubrication of our skin. They secrete an oily secretion known as sebum and in addition to its role as protective barrier that reduces skin dehydration, sebum also possesses antibacterial properties. The sebaceous glands are distributed over the entire body with the exception of palms and soles. They are most abundant on the scalp and face. Under normal circumstances, small amounts of sebum is produced, which is necessary to keep your skin moist. Another factor that contributes to the development of acne is skin shedding. Our skin cells are shed continuously with a cycle of about 56 days. The same shedding of cells also occurs in the topmost portion of the hair follicle. This is important as this contributes to one of the important factors why acne develops. Now let's understand how acne is formed from this pilosebaceous unit. And before that I would just like to mention that you can join our channel and get the ultimate guide to remove acne which is a 6 page ebook and covers face mapping charts, zones of acne and 10 extra tips that will help you to maintain an acne free skin. So click the join button below to know more. Age is a very important factor for the development of acne. As soon as you hit puberty, your testosterone levels go like this. And just like we discussed earlier, testosterone is one of the main hormones that controls the amount of sebum produced by the sebaceous glands. The amount of sebum produced by the sebaceous glands increases when you hit puberty. Next comes the role of bacteria and other pathogens in the formation of your acne. These include Propionibacterium acne species and many others but Propionibacterium acne is the most abundant. So to summarize, up till now we have identified many factors as to why acne develop. Age being the driving factor which leads to an increase in the levels of testosterone in your blood. Skin cell shedding also occurs and then we discuss about the role of bacteria in acne. Now what happens is that when glands produce too much oil, the pores can become blocked and dirt, bacteria and cells build up. The blockage is called a plug or a comedon. If the top of the plug is white, it is called a whitehead and if the top of the plug is dark, it is referred to as blackhead. Black color is due to keratin plug that gets fixed on the pore of the pilosebaceous unit. A whitehead is due to a small collection of pus in the follicle opening. 
Once the plug occurs, propionic bacterium acne starts to grow in the follicle. The bacterium then sets off a cascade of inflammation and the plug becomes red and bigger and ultimately turns into a pimple. When the inflammation doesn't stop, the acne becomes even bigger and goes deeper into the skin, ultimately becoming a cyst. So this is how acne is formed. Upon reaching a certain age, your hormone levels start to rise, which triggers an increase in the sebum production by the sebaceous glands. This combined with follicular plugging by shed skin cells and infiltration of bacteria into the pilosebaceous unit leads to formation of acne or in layman's language, a pimple. Now I wish it were that simple because in this way all of us should have acne. Males have high levels of testosterone at the time of puberty. Females also have many types of hormones like DHEAS, testosterone etc. So by that logic almost 100% of people should have acne. But there is a big but here. There are many other factors that also determine whether you will develop acne or not. Some of them are clearly known and some of them are being still researched. For example. Stress, oily and unhealthy foods, dairy products, skipping meals, cosmetics are some of the well-known exaggerating factors for development of acne. Other factors which are known to cause acne include food allergies that can include allergies to dairy products, iodine, gluten or biotin. Underlying health problems can also cause acne. These include thyroid problems, PCOS, diabetes, digestive imbalances and metabolism issues. But some factors are still debatable or questionable, as many factors are considered to be a cause of acne, but most of them are not scientifically proven. So now we have understood how acne is formed. We have understood some of the exaggerating factors and before we jump on to the treatment of acne, it is very important for you to understand the four grades of acne. Acne are divided into four grades with increasing severity of the lesions. Grade one include comedons and few papules. Papules being raised lesions less than 1 cm. Grade 2 acne includes whiteheads. Whiteheads are also known as pustules, which are small pus filled acne but that we commonly know as whiteheads. And grade 3 acne is when you start developing few nodules along with whiteheads. Nodular lesions are more than 1 cm and are solid red raised lesions which have active inflammation in them. Grade 4 is when you get the uglier looking type of acne and these are the nodules and the cysts. Inflammation is marked and there will be a lot of papules and pustules over the face. Plus scarring is permanent in this grade. So by now you would have probably put yourself in grade 1, grade 2 or grade 4 depending upon the acne you have. Let's start with how to treat acne. In this I will be talking about topical medicines you can apply on your face face hygiene and oral medicines and when and how you should take them and a lot more. And then in the end we will discuss about some of the best lifestyle changes you can do and at home remedies that you can apply which will give you the best results for your acne. So stay tuned till the end. The treatment depends upon the severity of the acne and that is why I introduced you to these various grades of acne as different grades of acne have different treatment options. Let's start with the basics. So if you have grade 1 acne, your basic treatment options are only topical medications that you can apply on your face. I recommend a simple topical retinoid cream and a salicylic acid face wash to be applied twice daily. The nighttime application of any cream is more beneficial as it gives the cream more time and space to absorb deeply into your skin. Retinoids normalize the cell cycle of the keratinocytes and also do a host of other things that are beneficial for a person who has acne on the face. The most commonly used are adapalene in the concentration of 0.1 to 0.3 which is applied twice daily on the face. It comes in gels, creams and lotions for you to choose from. And from the day you start application you will see the results in a few weeks. Salicylic acid face wash is important as it helps to peel off the topmost layer of dead cells on your face as well as it also reduces the stickiness of individual cells with each other. In comedon extraction, a comedon extractor instrument is placed central to the comedon and a firm downward pressure is applied. As a result, unwanted material then comes out from the comedon. Now I want to discuss a very important topic for the management of acne and that is face hygiene. 
This includes washing your face two to three times a day with a good salicylic acid containing face wash and depending upon the skin type using a particular moisturizer. Washing your face in the night is particularly important as it cleanses your skin and then you can apply a moisturizer and then the subsequent topical medications. After that, you are not exposed to sunlight or any form of pollution, so the medicines that you can apply on your face get ample amount of time to work in your skin. Not touching your face with your hands as this transmits several pathogenic bacteria from your hands to your face. These tips are to be followed in all grades of acne. So most of the grade 1 acne respond to this minimal treatment of simple facial hygiene and topical medications and show a good response within 2 weeks of treatment. Next, we move on to the treatment of grade 2 acne. And if you remember, grade 2 acne is when we start seeing whiteheads along with blackheads. And in this also, you can follow the same treatment we used for grade 1 acne. In addition to topical retinoids, there are several topical medications that can be used in grade 2 acne. These include BPO or benzoyl peroxide, topical antibiotics and azelaic acid. Let's look at them one by one and see which one you should follow. BPO or benzoyl peroxide is a very good topical antibacterial agent that is effective against Propionibacterium acnes and other bacteria that cause infection in the pilosebaceous unit. It is available in 2.5 to 10% formulations for you to choose from. Choose a good face wash that contains BPO and salicylic acid in balanced combination that gives you the best result. I have included some links in the description below for you to choose from. The combination of 0.1% adapalene and 2.5% benzoyl peroxide provides much better and faster results as compared to the individual drugs alone. Azalic acid is a potent anti-inflammatory topical drug that you can apply. For acne, I recommend 20% concentration, which is the best. Then there are several topical antimicrobial creams that are available, but the most commonly used is topical clindamycin. It gives a good result and I'll leave a link below to a triple combination containing benzoyl peroxide, adapalene and clindamycin in appropriate concentrations. If we look at grade 3 acne, from here onwards things get serious. You have nodules on your face now and you have to start taking oral medications and the most commonly used drug worldwide are azithromycin, doxycycline, minocycline or isotretinoin among others. Now which drug you should take depends upon a lot of factors. That is why at Med Simplified, I always recommend consulting your local practitioner or MD Dermatology before taking any medicine. Now topical medicines are the same as that of the previous two. Benzoyl peroxide in combination with salicylic acid, azalic acid and retinoids like adapalene applied twice daily on your face. If you have grade 4 acne, you need to consider taking oral isotretinoin. This is the main drug for the treatment of these type of acne and is usually started at 10 to 20 mg per day and gradually increased up to 40 mg. In addition to isotretinoin, you should also take oral antibiotics like tetracyclines or macrolides like azithromycin. In stage 4 acne, we also use intralesional corticosteroids which are basically using a very small syringe to inject steroids like triamcinolone directly into the acne cyst. Other treatment options for severe acne include oral dapsone, oral contraceptives for females and comedone extraction. So this was in a nutshell how to we treat acne. Now let's look at some of the best lifestyle changes and at home remedies that you can do and that will help you to decrease the severity of your acne, reduce the number of outbreaks and if you're taking medicines for acne, these lifestyle changes will definitely improve your results of the medication. And the first one of them being your diet. Let's directly look at some of the food that worsens the acne and or causes new outbreaks. Dairy products especially skimmed milk, spicy food, fast food, whey protein powder, refined sugars, carbonated soft drinks, they all cause acne or they can exaggerate your already existing acne. Avoid these foods in your diet and find a good replacement. Now let's talk about some of the powerful home remedies for treating mild to moderate acne at home. 
Conventional acne treatments can be expensive and often have undesirable side effects like dryness, redness or irritation. This has prompted many people to look into how to cure acne naturally at home. The internet is filled with suggestions. Let's look at 5 of these home remedies for acne that are backed by science. The number one of them is applying apple cider vinegar to your face. Apple cider vinegar is made by fermenting apple cider or the unfiltered juice from pressed apples. Like other vinegars, it is known for its ability to fight many types of bacteria and viruses. Apple cider vinegar contains several organic acids that have shown to kill Propionibacterium acnes. It contains lactic acid and succinic acid which are known to suppress inflammation caused by this bacteria and also help to dry up the excess oil that causes acne in the first place. How to use it? Mix one part of apple cider vinegar and three parts of water. Use more water for sensitive skin. After cleaning, gently apply the mixture to skin using a cotton ball and let it sit for 5 to 20 minutes and then rinse with water and pat dry. Repeat this process one to two times per week as needed. It is important to note that applying apple cider vinegar to your skin can cause burns and irritation. So it should always be used in small amounts and diluted with water. Number two is to take a zinc supplement. Zinc is an essential nutrient that's important for cell growth, hormone production, metabolism and immune function. It is also one of the most studied natural treatments for acne. Research shows that people with acne tend to have lower levels of zinc in their blood than those with clear skin. Several studies have shown that taking zinc orally helps to reduce acne. In one study, 48 acne patients were given oral zinc supplements three times per day. After eight weeks, 38 patients experienced an 80 to 100 percent reduction in acne. The optimal dosage of zinc for acne has not been established, but several studies have shown a significant reduction in acne using 30 to 45 milligrams of elemental zinc per day. Number three is to make a honey and cinnamon mask. Studies have found that applying antioxidants to the skin is more effective at reducing acne than benzoyl peroxide and retinoids. Honey and cinnamon also have the ability to fight bacteria and reduce inflammation, which are two factors that trigger acne. How to make a honey and cinnamon mask? You just have to mix two tablespoons of honey and one teaspoon of cinnamon together to form a paste. After cleaning, apply the mask to your face and leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes. Rinse the mask off completely and pat your face dry. Number four is to take a fish oil supplement. Omega-3 fatty acids are incredibly healthy fats that offer a multitude of health benefits. You must get these fats from your diet, but research shows that most people who eat a standard western diet don't get enough of them. Fish oil contains two main types of omega-3 fatty acids. Eicosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid. EPA benefits the skin in several ways, including managing oil production, maintaining adequate hydration, and preventing acne. High levels of EPA and DHA have been shown to decrease inflammatory factors, which may reduce the risk of acne. The number fifth tip that you can follow in your home is to exfoliate regularly. Exfoliation is a process of removing the top layer of dead skin cells and it can be achieved mechanically by using a brush or scrub to physically remove the cells. Alternatively, it can be removed chemically by applying an acid that dissolves them. Exfoliation is believed to improve acne by removing the cells that clog up pores. It is also believed to make acne treatment for the skin more effective by allowing them to penetrate deeper once the topmost layer of skin is removed. Now, like I mentioned earlier guys, you can get the ultimate guide to remove acne by becoming a member of this channel. Click the join button below to know more. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.